Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Today, I would like to teach you how to graph the following polynomial function of x plus 4 multiplied by x minus 1 squared. So it turns out there's basically three things right, we have to know in order to graph a polynomial function and kind of really any function, I would say, uh, therefore. All right. One uh, would be uh, finding or identifying the end behavior. Okay, end behavior. Now, the end behavior is going to be determined by the overall multiplicity of the function. And it's like, oh, wait, what? In other words, you can look at it as the total multiplicity of the function, which, by the way, the multiplicities, remember, are just found from the powers, okay? The, the multiplicity of this factor is 2, the multiplicity of this factor is a 1, and therefore the total multiplicity here would just be additive, it would be 3. Another way you can look at it, if you don't have it in factored form, it would be, the end behavior would be a function of the highest coefficient, uh, excuse me, of the, well, it is the highest coefficient, of the coefficient, all right, of the highest power variable. So if you had something like x cubed, which this would wind up working out to be, if it was a positive coefficient there, positive 2 or nothing there even, because that's assumed to be a 1, if it were positive, that would tell you something about the end behavior, and if it were negative, that would also tell you something about the end behavior, okay? Now, in this fully factored form, the x's will work out to be positive. If you had a negative sign out here, then the leading coefficient would have been a negative value. But since there is no negative sign out there, we know it's going to be positive. Now, what you then have to do, and you can figure, you can use a table then in your calculator. You can plot this function if you want it and use a table. You can make your own table of values. Plus, you just make up some x values, find the corresponding g of x or the y value. But what might be better is to kind of, uh, I, don't, I don't really like to memorize certain things, uh, but to save time, sometimes memorization does indeed help. You should understand the why these end behaviors of the following types of functions, even degree versus odd degree, um, come about. I have a video on that, by the way. So if you're really curious, check that out. I'll try to leave a link in the description below. If not, though, it should probably be in this playlist. Um, so what we need to do is we're going to find the total multiplicity of this thing. Just add up all the powers of your factors. All right, so we're going to take, it's going to be to the total equal to the total multiplicity and that's gonna be equal to one plus two, and that's gonna be equal to three overall. Now, what you gotta do is you gotta identify this number and whether it's even or odd, because that's really what's important. So this number is odd. And you also have to identify whether it's going to be a positive coefficient, uh, leading coefficient or negative, and we already went through that, that it's gonna be positive. So what you do here is you find your odd degrees, here are your odd degrees, all right, and if the positive, if you have a positive leading coefficient, as I was mentioning, this will represent your end behavior. So, in other words, when you were to, when you create your little graph, all right, you're going to have the end behavior to the left go down and down and down this way forever, and the end behavior to the right side go on and on and on in that way forever. All right, that's basically what this whole chart will tell you. Okay. Now, now that that's done, the next step after you identify that end behavior is going to be to determine the x-intercepts. All right, sometimes known as the zeros of the function. So how do we do that? Well, I have a whole 20 or so odd videos detailing single actual, you know, functions like this and how to find the x-intercepts and why we do what we do. So please check out that playlist and look for those videos. If you're interested in figuring out why, uh, we approach it this way, which I highly recommend. You don't just kind of memorize things, but I want you to understand why. After you understand why, then you can start to memorize stuff. That's fine because it makes it go faster. But I definitely would not just kind of think about trying to memorize my way through life. All right. Uh, try to understand everything. Uh, in any case, um, I'm going to now approach this um, in a way where I'm going to take each factor now and set them equal to zero. What is a factor? Right. A factor is basically going to be some x term all right, with a power of 1, all right, raised to some, let's say, outer power of 1, and you can either have something added or subtracted from it. It could also be 0. There's, it, It's basically, it could be x, okay, or any variable, or it could be x plus or minus some constant. I'll call that c, all right, and it, this could also be raised to some power, okay? So this is a factor right in here. This is going to be x plus 4. You're going to set that factor equal to 0, 
and you're gonna do the other one, set that equal to zero. So obviously here, you're just gonna subtract four from both sides, right? So X is just going to be equal to negative four. All right, and then same thing here, you're gonna add one to both sides, right? And when you get that answer, it's just gonna be X is equal to positive one. And these now represent the X values where the function will either touch or cross the X axis, okay? So if I had to go negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, right? Maybe I'm out here somewhere. Okay, let's do this as negative four. And then X is gonna be equal to positive one. So there's a positive one, all right? Now what we wanna do is we wanna be able to determine the local behavior, all right, of the function right around negative four and right around positive one. You know, does this function now come up and cross four somehow? I might have to move this point out a little bit. You know, does it cross four? Does it go on up or does it come up and bounce? You don't come back down. Now that turns out to be a function of the multiplicity of that individual factor. In other words, look at this factor, figure out its multiplicity. Remember the multiplicity is found by just looking at the power of that overall factor. So the power here is a one, right? Now, what you have to ask yourself, okay, what's the significance? Well, it also, it just like we figured out the end behavior by looking at the total multiplicity and the sign, what I have to do here, these exponents will basically always be positive, all right, in these, in these problems. Um, but uh, if they're negative, then we've got to try to change the way we're looking at it. But um, what you're really focusing in on is whether these multiplicities here or these powers are odd or even, okay? The odd or even tells you now the local behavior. Why is that? Well, guess what? I have a video on that, all right? If you want to figure out why. Maybe I'll try to leave a link in the description. If not, I check out the playlist again, all right? Uh, the reason why I can't do, since we do so many problems, just, just so we're, we're on the same play page, since we do thousands and thousands of problems, it's hard for me to kind of explain every single, in every single video exactly why everything is happening because otherwise uh, we just wouldn't get to enough problems and a lot of students want us to keep putting out more and more questions and more and more videos. So we have to kind of do a balancing act, all right? So I please hope uh, you do understand and uh, forgive me for that. Um, but uh, what we're gonna do here is recognize that when we have an odd multiplicity for a factor, that's when it crosses, okay? You're going to cross the axis. And when it's even, it bumps, it bumps, okay? So uh, this factor, right, produced an x-intercept value of negative four. So I know at negative four, the function should be crossing. So I'm going to go like this, just cross it, okay? Then at this factor, x minus one, right, that produced the x-intercept of positive one, I know the function is just going to bump it there. So basically it's going to now come down like this, right, it's just gonna bump. Now, how do I know that it has to be on the top and not on the bottom? Well, if I go, if, if I have this bumping down at the bottom, what that means is I got to somehow connect this and wait a minute, now I cross the x-axis at some other location, but you, you just found that there's only two x-intercepts, right? You can't have three now, you would have had three x-intercepts, okay? So I know that it's going to bump, do a little bump there, okay? Uh, <laughs> Bumpy Johnson. That's for my son, by the way, Bumpy John. So we were playing Trouble uh, the other day, and I don't know, I haven't played Trouble, my goodness, and I don't even know how many years, maybe 25 years or something like that. And um, in Trouble, you can bump the opponent, right? If you land on the same spot, you, you bump the opponent. So I had recently watched um, American Gangster. Great movie, by the way. Um, and uh, God, I love Denzel. God. Anyway, um, right. So... I was watching, I was watching the movie, and you know, in the middle, in, in the beginning, right um, before Denzel takes over, you know, the whole operation. It was Bumpy, right? Bumpy Johnson, who uh, who who manned it. So now I just call every time somebody bumps someone in trouble. Now it's up, oh, Bumpy Johnson, Bumpy Johnson. Anyway, okay, all right, um, right. Get back to math. Back to math. Okay. So here uh, again, it's going to bump or do a little Bumpy Johnson there uh, at the top, because now I can connect, if you notice, now I can connect these two pieces with just a simple turn, right? And I can also connect these two pieces, okay? So, so far, I know this looks a little rough, right? It's not smooth, but we're getting the idea. Now, what we should anticipate here is there's no way that this y-intercept could possibly be negative, 
because if it were negative, it would have to come down and cross that axis someplace again, right? And we all know we only have two x-intercepts. So this y-intercept should be positive. Now that actually turns out to be the last key to the puzzle, all right, to really kind of graph this thing very accurately. And four does not come after two, so that should be number three, all right? So y-intercept now. And remember, the y-intercept is the location where the x value is going to be equal to zero, right? The coordinate there is going to be x is zero, y positive whatever, right? Positive three, four, five, 10, 15, who knows what we're going to get. But that's the benefit of doing the algebra now, okay? So all you simply do here is you rewrite your function. It's going to be x plus four uh, raised to the first, then multiplied by x minus one raised to the second, okay? And what we need to do now is just plug in zero for x because we want to find out what the function's value is or the y value. Remember, g of x, you can just write as y, and some people just like that. So I'm just going to write that as y. So you're going to plug in the zero for x, and all you're going to do is solve this now, all right? Because that will tell you the y value when the x value is equal to zero. So this is going to be four. This is going to be negative one. You're going to square negative one. Don't forget to do that. So that's going to be a positive one. And then positive one times four is just four. And omg -ness, that turned out to be positive, right? See, it all should now connect. So that should be a positive four there, all right? Now, what we can do here is we can try to clean this up a little bit, right? We can try to make this look a little nicer if you want, um, because honestly, this is just irking me. Oh boy, oh boy. So let's clean this up a little bit, okay? So let's just do a little erase job here. All right. And let's erase this on over here. And I'm going to try to make this a little, a tad bit neater. All right. So what should happen now is it should look something like this. Bam. All right. So there you have it. Now you can always check yourself. You can go to your calculator and just type in the function. Now open the parentheses x plus 4. So you go x plus 4, close the parentheses, open the parentheses again, x minus 1, x minus 1, close those parentheses, and then just square it, okay? Now go to zoom, go to standard, and let's see what's going on. Oh, look, it looks pretty close, right? I know it goes up to the top there, uh, so maybe what I'll do is I'll change the window a little bit. Let's go to uh, x max of maybe, I don't know, 25, and let's see what happens. All right, so now we got a nice little picture. And if you notice, right, it's like, well, should I, ha should I have known this turning point? Well, we could find that too, but we would probably need some more advanced techniques. And where you are currently in this class, most likely, is you don't have the, the tools yet to do that. Um, but uh, we certainly could. It's not required for, though, this problem. You're just trying to sketch the graph, all right? Um, Anyway, but you can clearly see in the picture, you see how it's crossing at minus four. See how it's bumping, doing a little bumpy Johnson at uh, number one, or right, number one. X is equal to one, and if you notice, it's crossing right around Y is equal to four. So, yeah, that's all there is to it. Okay, three steps. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it if this video helped you out at all. If you don't mind giving us a hand, like, subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. Um, if we were able to help you, maybe we'll be able to help them too. Okay, we want to try to help as many people as possible. Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning in. Check out our channel, by the way, because we've got thousands of videos, not only in mathematics, but physics and chemistry as well. And we have a lot more coming. Take care.